Hello. In previous lectures, we have analyzed several aspects of spatial justice in the city. I began by introducing the concept, saying that spatial justice connects social justice with the spatial dimension of a city, through the distribution of resources and opportunities throughout the territory. It does so through fair and participatory spatial planning that encourages active citizenship. Jan spoke about the importance of human rights to understand spatial justice and explained the difference between positive and negative rights. This was important to define disadvantaged citizens as dignified bearers of rights and not beggars. Donia spoke about the diversity in the city and the importance of inclusionary policies. She also warned us about the dangers of instrumentalizing diversity for political ends. Nuru spoke about politics in the public space and told us about how public demonstrations use public spaces to make a stance against oppression. She told us about the symbolic value of certain places in the city. Now, we will learn how these issues play a role in the daily life of a real city. Technology will transport us to Quito, the beautiful capital of Ecuador, where the last United Nations gathering on cities, the Habitat 3, took place in 2016. We will hear from Rosa, a public official working as an advisor for housing policies in the municipality of Quito. Rosa is also a PhD candidate at TU Delft in the Housing in a Changing Society Research Group. Rosa, how does housing contribute to redistribute resources fairly throughout the territory of Quito? The municipality cannot invest any funds in neighborhoods that are considered informal. The process of formation of these settlements did not comply with any urbanization norms, such as, for example, the obligation to leave some open space or a space to build some facilities. One of the main objectives of the regularization program for land tenure is to be able to provide these services and this is in these areas and therefore to promote a more redistributive policy throughout, these, uh, throughout the city and in the territory. By regularizing land tenure, neighborhood organizations also participate and help to find the ways to leave some open space in these informal areas. The housing market in Quito is 51% owner-occupied and 49% is in the rental sector. There is an important rental market in the city and it is for all income levels. Since Quito is a capital city, the structure of the housing market is telling us that there is a population mobility related to the universities, offices and public, of public sector serv and service related industries and tourism. Also, it is telling us that the population is young and there are affordability problems to become homeowners. One way to create a more fair housing market is to promote and facilitate different forms of tenure and, and tenure security. I think Quito has an interesting balance and one thing to work that is it is on quality of the dwellings to especially to improve the safety for er earthquake risks. And what is the current policy of the municipality concerning housing for very poor families? The municipal housing policy for the very poor is also part of the policy network that the national government promotes through their national incentives program. The national housing incentives program has different subsidies for families, for individual families, for developers, for municipalities. There are different kinds of subsidies. One is, for example, for ownership, so that the family can buy an affordable dwelling. And another one, for example, is, to, is a subsidy to build your own house in a rural lot. 
There is another subsidy for housing improvements and another one for relocation, especially for families when they live, especially poorer families live in risk areas or areas that are uh, um, vulnerable to natural hazards. To make these subsidies work, especially the ones for new dwellings and relocation, both municipality and housing ministry need to, need to cooperate. When the municipality and the ministry work together, it means that the municipal housing company is the one in charge of providing and mass producing dwellings so that poor families that used to live in these risk areas can move into new, safer dwellings and become homeowners. To be able to do this, the municipality has created an affordable land bank. We make ordinances and now we have about 20 hectares of land to be able to build affordable housing. These areas are located not really central in the city, somehow in the peripheries, but at least they, are still, uh, they still have access to employment and public transportation. Is there public participation in the process? in the planning of Quito? Yes and no. There is a formal way to participate in decision-making in neighborhood scale projects, which is a process that is regulated by the participation ordinance. The metropolitan city is, for example, divided into eight administrative zones, and each zone has a, a budget to, for public projects. 60% of the budget can be decided by public participation or participatory budgeting. Um, for big city level, I have to say that there is less participation in decision making and design processes. However, the people of Quito like to protest and to express themselves in different ways. And since Quito is the capital city, the main plaza, the plaza that we can see over there, is the main public space for public demonstrations. Sometimes demonstrations are not just about Quito. For example, this last month we, had, we have seen people of the Amazonian provinces protesting against mining contracts and the destruction and land grabbing of indigenous territories. How do planning processes take the rights of citizens into account? Planning in Ecuador is done and financed under constitutional rules. Our constitution recognizes the rights for good living, which include, of course, the human rights and even an additional one, the right to nature. To nature. Uh, our constitution is one of the few ones in Latin America that includes a special planning as an obligation of all different levels of government, from the national to municipalities, from metropolitan districts to the smallest units of governments and, paris and parishes. Uh, all planning processes are done under the constitutional rights framework established in the Constitution. Municipality and other levels of government do not receive any funds if they don't present the special uh, planning and the territory pl uh, plan uh, showing the forethought for, for government. And it has to be articulated to the national plan. What are specific problems women encounter in the city? Does the municipality have policies for them? Besides the inclusive policies of the, that the city has, one council member, Daniela Chacon, is very active regarding women's rights and our problems in the city. From the beginning of the administration, she promoted a program uh, so that women can immediately denounce sexual harassment in public transportation. Many cases have been processed under this program, and the program, of course, it includes a lot of publicity and marketing in buses and other media. There are women shelters for women with domestic violence, but these are not municipal and they don't receive uh, assistance from the municipal government, but rather from the national government social policies. And regarding the balance of women in power, there is actually a good balance in the current administration and the city council. For example, the secretary of Habitat, there are women uh, that are directors and also most of the advisors, we are all women too. Now that we are finishing the interview, I just wanted to let you know that behind me you can see uh, the historic center of Quito, which is the first world heritage city declared by UNESCO. Bye and thank you.